Restart the intro. There's no sound. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's what Wait I said. I said restart the intro. There's no sound. I know, I know. Hold on, hold on. God damn it. Technical difficulties, all that shit. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages? This is your boy James, aka Hollywood J Black, live in the building once again. The damn video ain't playing. Nah, we can't we can't have that. We can't we can't start all the way Wednesday without all the way. We can't do that. Can we, Phil? Well, you know, I actually got you here on time and you fuck up the video. <laughs> my fucking bad. You know what? You're right. I own that shit. It is my fault. I am an asshole. Are you, are you ready for take two? Yes, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try again with more bravado, okay? All right. Let's see. Put some heart into it. We'll put some time. heart into it. Put some stank on it. What? Some stank. Put some stank on it. I'm ready. Are you ready? Oh. Yeah, I'm muting my mic now. Restart the video. Oh. Restart. Reboot. We'll be right back, ladies and, and gentlemen. Action. Yes. Woohoo. Ladies and gentlemen. Would you please rise for the playing of our national anthem? Game time, NBA. Slamming ops like MMA in the octagon. When I'm about to rhyme, I drop a young eight like it's mama time. Then eight more. That's a Paul Gasol. They gon' say, whoa, that boy's wrong. Got a fast break straight to the hole. Drop the last eight. That's 24. And there's plenty more where that came from. Better know the flow grade A1. And I'm handed that shit. Stay hot. They can plan to exit. They can hot. I got hands in the fight like me. Whether I know your man's in the mic. They can think better. But they ain't never. They featherweight. Treble clap a heavyweight. Never stay. Never delegate. My team the greatest from the NYC to Vegas. Not that I'm in the game. I see the A-list. But I'm a can't quite see you, they wish I'm raising the bar. Players ain't raking and taking up space at the bar when we drank and I'm calling a play. Balling the ball, we calling it day. We going all the way. We're taking off from here. Watch us we go. Ain't no one blocking or stopping. We know. We make it never be shot that we grow. Watch us we go. Going all the way. You know we coming. We going all the way. Up to something. We're going all the way. My team got rings like stepping in them. You shouldn't need to think about stepping in them. And when they got the ball, it's like a weapon in them. We win, they pop the ball, like a lemon in them. I mean, way too long. So I know it's been only. Are you going to stop, stop the video now? No, I will not. We're going to let the little background ride out for a little bit since I got everybody's attention. A little background thing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the Overtime Sports Show. I'm your boy, James, so, so aka thought, Hollywood J Black. What? When what? I shared the video, I put a James starting off sloppy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know, we got to. I'm in meet, I'm in mid season form like Carmelo last night, baby. Woo! Woo! That's right. <laughs> Mid-season form, you know how we do. Anyways, y'all, welcome to the show. Um, this show is going just about as well as my week started last week in the NFL, but I hope that it ends just exactly the way that I wanted it to. Um, but I'm not alone on this mission. Four huh? ten? You wanted it to end four ten? <laughs> I didn't do that bad. Last week you did. Well, this week I mean. Well, that's what All I right, said. So this week, this week we have to bounce. Back. We both went eleven and three. That's right. Damn it! Shit. You know what's the messed up part about it? Is that I forgot yes, to. If you're new here, since he's being sloppy today, my name is Big Motherfucking Sin. Well, you cut and me off before you came back. You cut me off before I could say that. So that is your fault. It is your fault. We're five minutes into the video, and we just got through with the intro song. 
You mean we? You mean the, the intro song that we played like three times already? Yes, I know. Thank you very much. That's how much I like this song, ladies and gentlemen. That song is pretty fucking awesome. If you don't well, know, I'm gonna what make it is. you a promise tonight. Mm -hmm. I promise you that I will not turn off my camera. Oh, look at that! But, but I'm gonna do something else with the way this video started. I'm pretty sure it's probably fitting, and people are like, "Yeah, these guys are a little weird." So. Salud. <laughs> they're gonna baker at you. They're gonna. They're gonna <laughs> people knock on your boom, boom, boom. We saw Big Sin kill himself after Hollywood J Black fucked up the intro on the Overtime Sports Show. Is he alive, sir? Nope, he did. Paul gonna be like, get the fuck out my door. They, they call me. They call me dead motherfucking Sin now. Okay. <laughs> dead motherfucking Sin. Is that is that your uh is that your um your your bump in the night e alter ego from WWE two K twenty? You know when the game actually works? Oh it doesn't oh. work at all, so I don't know. <laughs> that fucking game. Let me tell y'all something though. Yes, we bounce bounce back time. Eleven and three. I tell you, let me tell you how bad this went. If I would have actually submitted my picks um at work for the poll, I would have won five hundred dollars. Um, listen here, Mr. Hindsight is twenty twenty. That was a dumb move you did not do. N no, I selected the same exact picks. Remember, we talked about this on the show. Oh, yeah. I selected oh, the yeah. same picks. And I thought, I was like, shit, I'm going to be $500 richer. And I forgot to hit the damn submit button on, on Thursday before I went home from work. Yeah, I, I I am that dude, ladies and gentlemen. I am that dude that found a way to somehow lose five hundred dollars. That's right. Without even winning it, I somehow lost it. He uh, lost it and he had to play the intro song three times because no sound. I got I gotta do better, y'all. I gotta do better. I'm sorry. I'm so, sorry. Next time. You know who else needs to do better? Who else Just needs to do better? Doing better. Both of these teams, and that is the New York Jets and the Washington Redskins. The battle of New York. <sighs> Ow. It's the Jets and the Redskins. How is that the battle oh. of New York? Then the Jets. I'm, I'm thinking the last week with the Jets and the Giants. Oh, my God. God damn it, James. I want you to go <laughs> back to whatever you were doing before. <laughs> I was watching the revival and Undisputed Era kill themselves on NXT, okay? I've seen some things and some stuff tonight that hopefully if you could stay up for at least an hour that you'll see some things and some stuff. Yep, but anyway, oh, geez. Can never get you to watch wrestling on the days that wrestling comes on. No, no. It's too much to ask. They were always a, a day behind. See, this is why... See, this is why I have to be a day behind due to the fact that WWE 2K20 does not work and I have to do a live stream right after this show. Well, these are the Braves. Break it up, break it up. Yeah, break I it know. Up. I'm not complaining, but the Redskins are dumpster fire on the field, in their back office. Fucking Dwayne Haskins asking his offensive line, what can I do to help you guys? And they're just like... Which is the hottest or the hottest video on Simple Black Sports, ladies and gentlemen? The video where Dwayne Haskins has to ask his offensive lineman, what do I have to do to help you? That's how you know this season in Washington has went to... That's how you know Hollywood J. Black's going to be bad in three days because the NFL is going to get mad about how many views that video is getting. Anyway. Hey, hey it, put it this way. It was some guy that was on the on the sideline that recorded that, not the NFL. So I got lucky on that one. I, yes, that's right. That's right. I don't know why they allow cell phones on the field, but, you know, whatever. Also, for those who don't know, Hollywood J. Black got banned for three days for making fun of himself one time. So that's how we both know Facebook hates both of us because I still do not have my admin rights to my own pages on my main account. What the actual? What, yeah. what did you do? I, I still don't have the admin rights to those pages. And you've emailed Facebook. I know you have. Do I got to unadd you and re add you as an admin? It seems like the only thing. I, I already tried it. It's a, and nope, it's no block. <sighs> what, yeah. what the fuck? But that's why we have backup accounts. Yes, that is why. We have backup accounts. So, so anyway, this talk we're having right now was more enjoyable than the game actually was. Yes, it was. I mean, I mean, the Jets were happy, right? 
Or the Giants or some team was happy. Washington wasn't happy. That's for damn sure. Bro, Le'Veon um, Bell refused to take a drug test, so I'm guessing he's going to be announced to be suspended for the next rest of the season here in a couple weeks. So in the last 10 weeks, they have given Le'Veon Bell eight HGH uh, tests. Um, and he refused to take this one, which means he's going to be suspended. So if anybody deserves an HGH test, you would think – that would probably be, you know, I don't know, Debo Samuel for the well, way. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, it is Le'Veon Bell. And it's also a marijuana test. The reason they have to shadow it as an HCA test, HCH test, is because of what's going on with the CBD being legalized across the country, and you're not going to be a drug tested for it no more. Now, when you have back in Pittsburgh, you have Le'Veon Bell, who is the poster child of Texas and goodness. Rolling with um, LeGarrette Blunt. Yep. You would think LeGarrette Blunt was one who had been popped for marijuana. Nope. That was Le'Veon Bell. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, but still, though, like, come on, leave that man alone. Like, 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 really? He's already having a bad season. He's on the Jets, for God's fucking sake. Okay? Like, he's already having a crap season. I mean, Washington's already having a bad season. Hold on, what did you just say? These are the Braves. <laughs> like, but, but, like, come on. Like, everybody's just shit at this game. Leave leave them alone for a week. I mean, damn. I mean, I'm pretty sure if they was doing HGH, there'd be a lot better stats being put out there than the stats that were actually on the field. Uh, no? No, you don't think so? You, so know, you, why? Think- you know why? What? Because Sam Darnold sees this. So you don't think that uh, if they came out, if the Jets came out looking like the Monstars, all swollen shit, looking like the Monstars. Say that again. You sounded far, far away. Still far away. You actually no sound. Oh, if I could actually, if I was actually talking, I said they would still lose because their coach is a crackhead. Oh, I mean, it's probably more so meth than crack, but that's neither here nor there. I mean, oh, yeah. given the fact. How about that South Dakota meth? We got it here. <laughs> that, what a way to advertise. And, and, and you hear the governor's like, our advertising is working perfectly. Yeah, I think half the people from Pump move there. <laughs> uh, like, let's just, just go fucking there. Fuck it. Oh my God! So shout out to um the Jets for winning. I guess I mean if that's a thing you could be proud of beating the beating the Redskins. So um, next up we have a team that has high hopes for the playoffs. I guess the team who James likes to pick on the regular against them and hey he won a game. The Saints beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this weekend. <sighs> I swear. Uh, I Tampa Bay cannot win for losing. Um, tell me why OJ Howard tried to catch a pass behind his back. That's what I want to know. Did you see that? After that, it, it, things were going smoothly for Tampa Bay until OJ Howard decided to catch a pass behind his back. Would you like to know why? Why? Because these are the Braves. But subsequently, that pass ended up bouncing off of his hands and into a Saints defender. So Jameis Winston could not avoid an interception, even when it was not his fault. Oh, my God. It ain't my fault. If he was in, it ain't my fault. <laughs> but Drew Brees continuing his uh his romp to the playoffs, and the Saints he are bounced, looking. He bounced back from getting trounced by the Falcons last week. Yes. Oh, man, that, that Falcons beating was something else. I didn't see that coming. Apparently, the Saints didn't see it coming either. I'll tell you that much. You know what else nobody saw coming? What? The next game. The Denver Broncos got up 20 to nothing on the Minnesota Vikings and did what the Broncos have done all year, choked. <coughs> this time, this time they can't blame Joe Flacco. Nope. Can't blame Flacco. Um... So for a team that was known for their elite defense and being able to shut people down in crunch time, um, that was before they abandoned Tim Tebow. Uh, yeah, I said it. The Broncos abandoned Tim Tebow. But anyways, um, they sure cannot, 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 cannot win a game. 
to what can't finish a game. They played some of the three and a half best quarters of football every game, every goddamn game, and all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. Well, you know what's funny about that? What? Your know, offensive coordinator has the same name of the motherfucker you don't like on the fucking Browns. Finley? I mean, uh-huh. their quarterback, uh-huh. quarterback. It sounds the same. Phil Lindsley, whatever the fuck that guy's name is. Yeah. Are you surprised, though? Those Lees, that's what it is. Uh, but so, so, okay. so who, who so uh the Minnesota Kirk Cousins look Kirk Cousins actually won a game from behind. That is that's the one thing we should be asking about. I mean if Dalvin he's gonna Cook win, showed, hold on Dalvin Cook showed out the second half. Oh he he showed the fuck out. Um Stephon Dalvin, 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 Cook, Dalvin Cook is slowly but surely making his way up the MVP rankings in my book. Well, he, he's got a Christian McCaffrey to uh, to contend with on the running back side. So in um, three games, we'll talk about that. <laughs> but uh, shout out to Kirk Cousins for finally getting a comeback from a high victory. Yeah, last yeah. week he beat an above five hundred team. This week he finally came back against a two win team. He's he's exercising his demons. First, he was talking about a man that can't win a comeback victory. He took care of that. Took, talking about a team that can't be a winning team. He took care of that. You like that, huh? You like that? Oh, um, oh. what nobody likes was us picking the Dolphins this week. Uh, Not even us, ladies and gentlemen. So, myself and Mr. Black over there hopped on the Miami Dolphins hype train. They won two in a row. They're going to beat the Bears. No. 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 So, the most impressive thing I came, that came out of this is Josh Allen beat the Miami Dolphins by passing. Because the Dolphins traded their best safety to the Pittsburgh Steelers. But even at that. Even at and that. And they traded for a guy who's on IR named Akeem Tilly. Yeah. How do you trade for somebody who's on IR? Um... That those are the Dolphins doing Dolphins things. You know why? Oh, why? Are the Braves. <laughs> is that the theme of, of this show? I hope the thumbnail is Curtis Blow uh, saying these are the breaks with the fallout. Right, just might make it that with, with the demons going up his nose. No, oh, Lord. <laughs> we all know Curtis Blow throwing a lot of cocaine. <laughs> why? <Why-why? laughs> So I don't know why I hopped on this dolphin train. That was a damn shame of me. It's my fault. I take complete ownership of that one. I hope you didn't lose any money betting on betting on them. And if you did, it wasn't my fault to begin with. You know, the fuck- if you did, guess what? Let's what? stick it together, James. He's on page. Break it up. Break it up. Break it up. <laughs> All right. Next up, that's where you get for stuff to two people who do videos on Facebook. Yes, exactly. <laughs> anyway. Next up, we have what we knew was going to be a bad game for one team. We have the Jacksonville Jaguars defense get absolutely manhandled by the Indianapolis Colts running game. I remember I questioned this game. I questioned Nick Foles' readiness in this game. I said he wasn't ready. I said Jacoby Brissett's back. He's alive. His knee mostly works. He Um, wasn't ready. Brissett put that hammer on put that hammer down on him, even without T. Y. Hilton's. Um, no, because when you have Marlon Mack doing whatever the fuck you want, to do. yeah, I mean, I mean, what, what else can you fucking ask for, right? I mean, it's, it's, I mean, the Colts are looking like a legitimate uh, playoff contender. the The Colts have been world beaters this year. Um, I think did they play Baltimore this year? And I think they haven't beat. That's the only thing they haven't beat is Baltimore. I think they play Baltimore. Well, the Colts have lost three games. The Colts have lost three games. One of those to Miami. Yeah, that was an accident. Um, the other one was to they lost, they lost two games. Four, they lost four games. Yeah, four because I know one was to Miami, one was to Pittsburgh. Um, I think one was to Baltimore, and I don't know who the other. I think Houston. No, oh, they beat Houston. No, they lost Houston. Okay. Well, who knows? Well, I, I gotta look over it. But anyways. The Colts with Jacoby Brissett. You'll find out that answer on Friday. Okay. Jaco- yeah, the Colts with Jacoby Brissett are giant killers. They're the most dangerous team in the NFL that nobody wants to play at all. Um, I don't know. 
Next to the Ravens. Next to the Ravens. And Jacoby Brissett is not even a, a running threat like that. He's just really good at passing the damn football. Everybody's been talking about Russell Wilson, great black quarterback. Everybody's been talking about Deshaun Watson. Everybody's been talking about um, Lamar Jackson. Hold on. Stop. Collaborate and listen. Lamar right. Jackson, in his last four wins, has played Brady, um, Russell Wilson, um, and two other motherfuckers. Aaron Rod no, not the Packers. Two other good quarterbacks. And he has actually had more yards, more touchdowns, less interceptions than all four of those quarterbacks combined in this four games. True, and and I'll give respect where respect is due. However, he has one big glaring blemish on his record, and it's the Cleveland goddamn Browns. Trust me, the second game this season is not going to happen again. We don't know that. This is oh, division. I know, I know. This is the division rivals. We can't be saying that because the Browns beat them when at the height of their uh, at, at, at the height of Lamar Jackson's first game. No, he went that was, they were two and two. They were two and one at that time. Coming off of a bad loss, they took the Browns for granted, and the Browns beat them. That's exactly what happened. Man, listen, the Browns took the Browns for granted, okay? That's anyway, the next up, a team that James, me and James do like to pick, but because this week, because of certain circumstances, he had to pick his team, and they lost. The Dallas Cowboys at the Detroit Lions. The Lions was um, calling O'Driscoll as their quarterback. Okay, so the Cowboys beat him up pretty good. Listen, so the Cowboys barely got away. If it wasn't for Dak Prescott going the fuck off, the Lions actually had a shot in this game. But tell me how a defensive minded coach let Dak Prescott go for 400 plus um, and four touchdowns. So, speaking of Dak Prescott. Do you believe, do you have, Zick, does any merit in the fact that the Damian Tomlinson said they're taking away carries from Ezekiel Elliott so Dak Prescott can win the MVP? He said what? He said the Dallas Cowboys are taking away time from Ezekiel Elliott so Dak Prescott can win the MVP. So there's two things I, I like to point out. First Mark off, Jackson and Russell Wilson. First off, yeah, he, he's not winning the MVP. Uh, this year. Let's just start there. He is not. And I I will make this proclamation. I will put it to you this way. Lamar Jackson, Russell Wilson, and uh, Deshaun Watson can all get hurt this Sunday. And Dak Prescott will not win the MVP. Simply, you know why? Because well, Christian McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook are still around. Yeah. And I can, you know what? I can even make a case for um for Josh Jacobs on the damn Raiders because if it wasn't for Josh Jacobs the Raiders would be ass. Um, the Raiders would be on the Patriots. The Patriots would not be doing as well as they're doing. I mean, I can make it. We can, you, then you, we can flip around the Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, um, Jacoby Brissett because we look yeah. at it, the Colts are not good when he's not the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, shit, Mark Ingram for goddamn sakes. I mean. You know, when I seen what Danny and Tomlinson said this, I said, this man must have put his helmet on and started crying again like he did when they lost to the Patriots in the playoffs. It's that CTE kicking in, bro. Like, what the fuck? This nigga said they're taking away. I want to make sure I have this right. You said that they're taking away from from Ezekiel Elliott's carries, carries so they could give Dak Prescott the MVP. If that isn't yep. the most stupidest take of 2019 since Marcellus Wiley said that Colin Kaepernick's half black so he doesn't know the struggle and he shouldn't be dealing. There's your, there's your one per video. Well, I would have had to say it if, if, if Lithuania Thomas had to say something just as equally and fucking stupid. But I will digress, okay? Well, we don't jump on, we don't, we haven't jumped on Max Kellerman over the last eight years saying Tom Brady is going to fall off a cliff. Oh, my God. That's about as that's about as bad as uh what's his name, um the, what you call him said the same thing. What is it? What's what's the other black dude on that damn speak for yourself with the other big dude, Whitlock? Whitlock saying that the Patriots are gonna fall off. They should, they should have oh, fall you're off. talking about homeboy. Every time every time he said it, the Patriots won the championship. Oh, uh -huh. Patriots gonna fall off with championship. Patriots gonna fall off. 
championship. How about uh, Whitlock say that the Patriots are going to win it all, and then maybe the Patriots won't, okay? Well, they just might actually prove right for one time in his goddamn life. Oh, I know. Fucking right. Oh, my God. What's up, Toby? What's up, Lady Die? How you doing? Welcome to the show. Um, Yeah, so no, that's not happening. Dak Prescott... Even that, as he could go for four hundred plus for the rest of the season, and he's not winning the MVP. You know why? You know, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it right now. The other player on our team who deserves the MVP more than Jack Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, yeah. His name is Gallup, and the other one's name is Amari Cooper. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. I mean, at so some Gallup point, has a, Gallup has been a breath, a breath of fresh air. He that's what, he's like the young best player. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't get why he would have said that. Like, Ezekiel Elliott got paid, and the, and the times that Ezekiel Elliott needed to step up, he has not stepped up. And it's simply why that Ezekiel Elliott is getting the touches, that the lack of touches that he's getting. Because when he's asked to run the ball, he's he turns he turned to fucking Trent Richardson. Let me run right at the fucking uh, blockers instead of at the yeah, hole. Let me, um, let me remind everybody before Friday's show, the Cowboys are at Foxborough. Yeah, oh, that's going to be a rough one. Um, that's going to be a rough one. I can't wait for that one. Uh, Next up, we have they've now won three in a row, or two in a row, the Atlanta Falcons. Since me getting them off of my back are now proving to be a pain in my ass as they destroyed Christian McCaffrey. They actually stopped Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey things. They destroyed the Carolina Panthers this week. So it makes me wonder, and I, and I have to ask this question. So I, I like Christian McCaffrey. They right? are who we thought they were? No, not at all. You've noticed that this this these, the, this Falcons team has turned into a completely different animal ever since Dan Quinn gave up his uh, coaching rights, okay? Yes, your defensive head coach, the guy who got a job because of his defensive play calling, turned over his defensive playing rights, because you were the 32nd ranked defense in the NFL. Yes, the architect of the Legion of Boom. Um, he, he, I, I... <sighs> that, okay, so let me. While he's while he's getting ready to go off, I was going to say that just count. That just tells you the caliber of players he had on that team, and it wasn't his scheme that did that. True. However, they remember the Falcons had a really good defense. When they played the uh, the Patriots in the Super Bowl, um, it was at least they were a good defense for about three and a half quarters. Yeah, and then Tom Brady exposed them, and then exposed them and for Tom the Tom Brady went for four hundred some odd yards, and James White scored twenty two points in like ten minutes. <laughs> twenty eight three reference, anyways. But it makes you wonder: Has Dan Quinn been holding oh, yeah. back? Dan Quinn, good job, Baylor, for holding up the twenty eight three. Good job. <laughs> So that's the question. Has Dan Quinn been holding back Dan Quinn? Is that is that what's been going on this whole the last three years? I, I think that I think that's where we're at. Dan Quinn has been holding back Dan Quinn. So let me say something right now. So that game, we have one, two, three, four, five, six more to talk about. That Falcons game, right? Yep. Was the last loss we suffered this week. We won out the rest of the day. Yes. Following the Falcons game. Yes. Um, shout out to the uh, oh, wait, to, no, I'm wrong. You lost, you lost this next game. I won the next game, which game? everyone had everything else. All right, we'll figure it out, anyways. So, shout oh, out that's to what the, it is. <laughs> so, shout out to the Atlanta Falcons for winning. Um, why couldn't and, you do it when I had to pick you, dickheads? Oh, and also, uh, all right, so everybody's like about to hop off this uh, Kyle, uh, Kyle Allen bandwagon, and I'm like, is it? I'm like, didn't they lose? D didn't the same Saints team lose to the same Falcons team? And y'all ready to hop off the Kyle Allen bandwagon? Um, and then, Kalak, you have a great night also. You have a great night, sir. Thank you. That, that's the question that I have. Um, why is everybody hopping off this Kyle Allen bandwagon? Yes, I know he's lost, what, two, two, three out of the last four. Because he's thrown seven interceptions in the last three games. That's why. All right, so... He's played this resurgent Falcons defense. He's played my 49ers. Um, and he played a Tennessee team that he had no business losing to. 
I mean, you are. Oh, Cam Newton's out. Kyle Allen's the next guy. I think Kyle Allen is going to be a good quarterback in the NFL. But young quarterbacks go through the tough times sometimes. It yeah, happens. I keep telling people this. Like, they don't listen. Like, quit jumping off these bandwagons of these quarterbacks. I said, I said, you're worse flip floppers than Stephen A. fucking Smith and fucking Shannon Sharp. Quit flip flopping on them shit. That's Stick why we just want to start man. calling niggas summer shoes on time. Summer shoes, summer shoes, summer shoes. Summer shoes. Telling you, they keep flipping them flip flops like Matt Riddle. God damn it, jumping with the popping them shits off. Flip flops, baby. No, I have a serious question for you, sir. Of course, I'm down for serious questions. Why, in the blue motherfucking hell, did you think the Houston Texans were going to beat the Baltimore Ravens this week? Because up until last week. The the Ravens didn't have a defense. I thought it would be a really good game, and when it comes to really good games, uh, Deshaun Watson knows how to pull them off. Instead, well, since, they, since they played New England, the defense has been dominating. Well, Deshaun Watson has also been harassed and manhandled and mauled and um, other things that I cannot mention of words and stuff. So, like, um, I... I know how good Baltimore is. Don't get me wrong. Baltimore is great. I thought this was going to be a high-scoring game. I picked the over in this game when it was at, uh, uh, when it was advertised on my uh, on my on my. Uh, yeah, I got I got board. a message from I got a message from Toby for you. What message does Toby send now? Oh yeah, that. Well, <laughs> we we can't talk about this until this weekend. I gave I had my one shot yeah, of CK seven. Show. We gotta wait. Uh, we gotta wait till we gotta wait till uh, Friday, damn it. So I'll you uh, have my rebuttal. Lamar Jackson did Lamar Jackson things and just tore through Tennessee's de- defense the whole game. Well, Houston's defense, but we knew that. I think that was a given. It w- I, I think, I, like I said, I picked the over. I thought this game was gonna be like 35s, 40s. Um, Bro, we knew my team was 40s. Yeah, yeah. I knew that was gonna. Be, I just didn't think that the Texans wouldn't be able to put up an offensive point. Like now, here's the question I have. Why make pass interference of a viewable play when DeAndre Hopkins literally got tackled in the end zone five yards before the ball even got there, and they replayed it and still did not call back? <sighs> Which is also the flip side to a play that we're going to talk about later on. And you, I think you already know what play I'm going to talk about. Because um, the, there was something similar – but the other way around in the San Francisco 49ers game. Oh, um, but the same way. The best game of the week was this Cardinals 49ers game. The Cardinals came out there and said, hey, how you guys doing? Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, how you guys doing? <laughs> but remember I said it. I said that this was going to be the toughest game that the 49ers had to play because, one, there's now a whole entire blueprint on Jimmy Garoppolo that the, uh, that the, <clears throat> the Arizona knows how to exploit. And two, we have a problem with quarterbacks named Kyler fucking Murray. Um, this game hey, also. Hey, to- Toby said he's going to say alcohol wasn't involved. Oh lord! So we, so the 49ers, we have one of those stupid pass interference plays. Um, so essentially, it was just like this. Uh, Kyle Jusic practically manhandled. He's an offensive player. Practically manhandled the defender of the Arizona Cardinals. And the defender of the Arizona Cardinals was called for pass interference. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know that. He was like hugging that man. He dove and hugging. He, he dove and then hugged him while diving. You know what it reminded me of? What? When the first Patriot Civil War win, when... Willie McGinnis ran off the edge of the line and gave Marshall Falk a hug. Here's a hug, buddy. Yay. Oh, let me tell you something. Um, but that game was a harder game for game for both teams. We earned our shit that game. Let me tell you. We earned our spot. It was – I couldn't have asked for anything else for my San Francisco 49ers. I couldn't – I mean, the Arizona Cardinals – Performed admirably well. It took a last-minute touchdown by Kendrick Bourne. Uh, Kendrick Bourne and Debo Samuel. They, uh, Debo Samuel, the rookie. Kendrick Bourne, the first-year player. Um, taking the place of Dante Pettis. Uh, we, with George Kittle still out. 
Um, and they performed admirably well. On the flip side, do you know that the Cardinals are the youngest team in the NFL? Yes, I do. And um, what, what, what is showing me this year is that Kyler Murray might just be a special player over the years. If Think about this. If Kyler Murray had – what had this team winning? If they had a winning record, we'd be having Kyler Murray in this conversation for MVP. He um, played fantastic this year. Yeah, he's played fantastic. The stats show it, and he's literally the, the offensive most- line is just now protecting him. Well, it, it, the, the good the, the good part about something like that, right, is that the offensive line last year was shit because they couldn't block a, a pocket quarterback, but they can sure as hell run around and block a uh, what you call quarterback. He has Kyler Murray is the most sacked quarterback in the NFL right now, which you have to expect because he's extremely mobile. Um, so they do take a lot of risky plays that he ends up getting sacked on. However, at the same time, he's one, he's the oh. most dangerous offensive weapon in the NFL outside of Lamar Jackson. Um, and he, they don't even have to run uh read option or none of that shit. They don't have to do any of that. Um, they'll go shotgun and all of a sudden Kyler Murray will take the fuck off from the shotgun and he'll have to run 15 yards to get that 10 yards, but he'll get him. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he'll do a two step drop back from the shotgun and it will be gone. So next up, we're going to talk about statistically the most accurate non quarterback in NFL history. We are going to talk about number 11, the toughest Jew. In the NFL, Julian Edelman threw a bullet pass to Philip Dorsett in the end zone for his fifth passing touchdown. It was beautiful. Um, the former quarterback from Kent State University, um, when when they couldn't get a touchdown from from Tom Brady, they found a way to get a touchdown from another quarterback. Yes, Toby, I know the Patriots have some of the oldest players in the league. I am well aware. But guess what? Unlike your Bears, we still win, God damn it! Actually, are the Patriots the oldest, Lily? I think that distinction, um, if I remember correctly, um, falls on, I want to say, the Cowboys. Arizona, Arizona and Oakland are the two youngest. Yeah, so I think the Cowboys are the oldest. Because remember, the Patriots... They're they have the they're like the Niners. Their their defense is extremely young and hungry outside of the veterans that they have. Yeah. So while you guys have Gilmore and the uh and the and the McCourty twins and Patrick Chung, which they yes, they've been around forever, you guys have younger uh players in key well, positions. Actually, Gilmore's only in his fifth year. Yeah, but you know, I mean you realize the average lifespan of a cornerback in the NFL is eight, so he's like towards the end of it. Just saying. Would you throw at him? No. No, not at all. What the fuck do you think this and is? Carson Wentz realized that the only person who could get open or catch the ball against Stephen Gilmore was Car- was Mr. Um, Zach Hurts, who apparently was crying to the referees the whole game. Yes. He had tears in his eyes. Uh, the boogeyman affected him in ways that he could not even imagine. Um, and we exposed our offensive line, too. Yes. And what, and what about Nelson Aguilar's stone hands? I mean, this is all right. So, if you know a man consistently has stone hands, right? Well, here you go. I got an impression. <laughs> but I like, like, if you know this man consistently has stone hands, why are you throwing to him? Why, uh, like, like, I don't get that. Like, oh, no, let, let me. Okay, so his hands are a tale of two passes. Because two plays before, he made a fantastic catch in the middle of the field. And then the two plays where it actually counted, Homeboy's hands turned into... It's arthritis, isn't it? Is his hands arthritic? He can only use them once per, once per uh, drive? Okay, all right. That, there you go. Nelson Algalore has arthritic hands. You've heard it here first exclusively on the Overtime Sports Show, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so the, the biggest thing to come out of this game is this. In 2000, when the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl against the Patriots, Lane mm-hmm. Johnson came out and said, oh, you can win five or six Super Bowls, but I'm glad to be having fun out there. 
Bill okay. Belichick in a very cheeky comment in the press conference. Well, how does it feel? You know, how does it feel to beat the Eagles? Well, it looked like we were having fun out there. <laughs> why, why is it getting so dark in here? Yes. Oh, because of all the shade that was thrown, ladies and gentlemen. He, Bill Belichick is the cheekiest interview in the NFL. <laughs> Toby says, don't mind him. He's going to sit over here and stir the shit pot. Oh, man. Hope you got a big enough balloon because there's a lot of shit being stirred. (laughs) And speaking of shit being being stirred, the Cincinnati Bengals almost beat the Oakland Raiders. I did not see this one coming. You know what it is? This is, I would say what it is, but I can't say his name. We're getting into danger territory now to where the Bengals might actually win one or two games. They're almost there. They're They're almost there. I mean, they're trash. Um and and this is the stink of Hugh Jackson is is looming over that whole team. Oh, hold on, I was talking about the Bengals. I was talking. About, oh well, it's Raiders too. So this guy played for both teams. How the fuck, Vontez Burford come out against Miles Garrett? I'm like, yeah, really? <laughs> he's trying to he's trying to make make his way back into the minds and hearts of fans. No. That's what it is. And then after he he did that, he said, "Yeah, I made over Vontez Burford. I was like, no, bitch." There's the Vontaze perfect we know. Is he because he gave himself CTE? That's what it is. He doesn't know what the fuck to say. Oh, speaking of CTE, did you see Antonio Brown's Instagram today or yesterday? Yes. You, craft, I'm sorry. You, you know who put him up to it. Don't act like you don't know who was sitting right next to him. Hey, hey, fucking apologize, dumbass. <laughs> It's so bad when Julian Edelman and all the other Patriots wideouts uh, like 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 the fucking Instagram posts because I'm telling you they were all sitting in Tom Brady's house and, t- and Brown was like, "What am I supposed to do, Tom? You gotta apologize, man. But I will tell me what to say, Tom. Please tell me what to say. I got you. I got you." <laughs> and they all hold, they probably all hold up around him and shit. You and know how that the shit. Funniest went part about that today, the funniest part about that today in the media with Bill Belichick. Uh huh. He was asked about the Antonio Brown apology and what the Patriots are going to do. And he said, oh, that's up to Robert. <laughs> oh, Lord. Antonio Brown, we signed with the Patriots. Good for him. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know if that happens and they get a fresh Antonio Brown for the playoffs, I'm out. That's it. I'm done. I, I, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm done. I'm like, that's it. Sorry. Is it, is it just, just have the fucking. Because now we got a Muhammad Sanu who's like dominant and kill Harry. You look really good against the Eagles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what are you, what are you, what are you going to defend? How many times can you triple cover somebody? And Johnny Nelson just does what he wants anyway. I was saying, how many triple coverages can you throw out there? Like, there's only so many that you could do with personnel. It's not like you got 15 football players on the field. It's, it's not going to work. So Antonio Brown comes back. Everybody's fucked. Um, that solves that. That even solves the Lamar Jackson problem. Who needs to stop Lamar Jackson when you could just score a bunch of points and outscore his ass? There you go. Fuck it. So anyway, the Bengals and the Raiders. The Raiders continue winning. I think. They're- yeah, they won three in a row now. And you know, you know, the Raiders went on the road and actually had a hell of a decent road trip before they came yeah. back home. So. The Raiders might actually end up stealing the AFC West from the Chiefs. Well, if it wasn't for the San Diego Chargers, and we'll get back to that here in a minute, and Philip Rivers is back and doing anything except for making babies, they'd be tied right now with the Kansas City Chiefs at the top of the division. Yeah, I know. And I, but I think there's still some room for fun uh, for the rest of the season. Kansas City's oh, yeah. schedule does not get easy. Speaking of fun, this was one of the more ugly games of the week. And Todd Gurley had, I think, 110 yards rushing in the first half in this game against the Vaulted Bears. What was a Vaulted Bears defense at one point in time? Yeah. Chicago Bears blew another one to the Los Angeles Rams. And tell me why. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a party. <laughs> tell me why Mitchell Trubisky is still on the field. Well, he hurt his hip. And he went to the sideline and cried with his coach, Matt Nagy, after he hurt his well, hip. Well, if he didn't hurt his hip like Tua Tungalolova did, he'll be back next week. 
according to Nick, if Nick Saban was in charge, yeah, of course. You know how that goes. But since it's not Nate, poor tanking teams, you may have to take a flyer on Tua because he got fucked up. Why are you yeah. trying to run a screen pass? Why are you trying to run a bootleg when you're up 28 points? Nick Saban. Nick Saban's trying to kill him. That's what it is. He wants to keep him in college one more year. Two. Two. Bootleg. But the <laughs> offensive line should be the left. You go to the right. But the offensive line is going to you go to the right. <laughs> Just do it. <sighs> and what happened? It's two words all over. And there goes his hip. Yep. <laughs> That's what that shit was. <laughs> Now, the but, Rams still don't look good. No. Um, the Rams don't look good, but Todd Gurley, all he had to do was what he does nor- used to do normally in the whole games, do in the first half in order to keep everybody at bay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it's real, though. Todd Gurley, I told you. Todd Gurley's cap. What, what did I say What I message? I said he'll get about 10 carries. <laughs> Maybe 15. That's about it. He won't be able to run for any more. That's that's the fifteen is about the max, and that's really pushing it at that point. Um, and that's I, I'm looking up Todd Gurley's stats from this game. Yeah, I think if you look it up, I think he had less than uh, fifteen runs. That's what we said is because we suck. That's what that's what that's what wrong. Is. That's the problem. I know. We all know that. No, he had 25 carries for 97 yards and a touchdown. Oh, that means he's not playing next week then. Okay, all right, cool. He's going to be like Earl Campbell's going to have the bandages, the bandages and the ice wrapped around his knees as he's walking around. He's going he gonna to come out looking like fucking Kurt Warner in his final season in Arizona? Yep, bionic knees and shit. Oh, my God. They know what he's going to say? What? These are the breaks. <laughs> And tears. And the tears. So it's next a- up we have what was it? Atrocious field in Mexico. Um the Chargers, I'm surprised they were even in this game at the end. So Gruber is throwing three interceptions before that final drive. But Patrick Mahomes also threw a couple of interceptions. This um, game, this game was ugly as shit. The Chiefs are not as good as people thought they were, and let's be honest right here, right now. They are not going to make it through this playoffs. No, let, let's really let's be doubly honest. The Chiefs have not been good since Kareem Hunt left the team, um, and they haven't found anybody to replace him. They haven't found they haven't found anybody to even supplement the low. Lashawn McCoy is not that dude that he used to be. They you know, he, he is that dude he used to be. The guy that only carries the ball twenty five times a game. Gets injured, sits out three weeks, come back, has a good game, gets injured, sits out three weeks, comes back, has a shitty game, follows it up with a good game, gets injured, then gets benched for non football injuries, then comes back and has a decent game. That's Shady McCoy's career. Damn, you you've literally described the Shady McCoy season all in one rap. <laughs> he was never this much of a bitch when he was in Philadelphia. Oh, oh, did I say that? Did I say that? Yeah. And let's, let's also remember. He's playing for the coach at Cut Aaron. Yeah, but still, I mean, we all make mistakes. No, I don't think cutting him was a mistake. You don't think cutting him was- going back to him was a mistake. Yeah, that's true. That's probably true. But, but either way. whatever is the only thing he can get right is making babies. And that face he had at the end of the game when he threw that fourth pick, his wife gets to see on a nice nightly basis though. <laughs> that was Kobe. his whole face when he threw that final interception. Yeah, he was like, "Fuck, I fucking did this." To- Toby says, "You know, we may suck, but at least we're not the Cowboys." No, because the Cowboys blow, and it would defy the laws of physics if you suck and blow at the same time. Anyways, well, they anyway. said the only thing the only thing that Dallas is known for is skiers and queers. And I don't see any bulls on that Cowboys lineup. <laughs> So now I guess it's time for the Thursday night game. This Thursday night game is very interesting because the AFC South is dangling like a big sack of balls right over somebody's face. Yeah. We have the Indianapolis Colts 
who have been playing very well, at the Houston Texans, who just got decimated by the Baltimore Ravens. Um, the Houston Texans, without their defensive leader, have been a a a problem, and not in a good way. Uh, the offense we've had to carry them, and that's an issue. Yes, especially, and it's not like they're going against a defense that's like the best in the NFL, but there's no slouches either. Um, so they're going to be a very good game. Yes, very good. I mean, part of me will say that the Texans are at home, so I would, would want to take them. But the Colts need to win this game, I think, even more so than the Jets. I, I mean, the Jets, mean, I mean, the Texans. Texans. You just confused the Texans for the Jets. You that's how bad they're that's how, your corner and you play a witch, god damn it. That, that's how bad they played last week. You're right, you're right. Yes, again. Oh, right. yay! Oh, my bad, my bad. So, I got my monies on the Colts. I think the Colts are desperate. Um, the Colts know they, that the, this right in their grass. I think they're gonna play a lot harder than, than Houston, especially with Tennessee nipping on everybody's heels, too. Ryan Fitzpatrick is an 8-8 eight eight quarterback. He's not taking that team to the playoff. But I got the Colts here. They're playing pretty good football with the Jacoby sets on the center. Um, the team expects him, and they're going to follow his lead. He's the a, a winner. Yeah, I think as long as Kobe Jacoby Brissett's on there, the, the sky's the limit for the Indianapolis Colts. Right, so now it's time for James' favorite segment. Ask me five random-ass questions. It gives me five minutes to answer all five. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We call this the five and five. Are you ready, sir? What was your biggest surprise from the from the week eleven games? Biggest surprise from week eleven? Yeah, would probably be the Atlanta Falcons shutting down Christian McCaffrey this week. Yeah, I would happen to say so too. I mean, you would think that a lot of teams have shut down Kyle Allen, but let Christian McCaffrey do his thing. Um, they did both. <laughs> yeah, they complete shut down. Business did not pick up. Um, all right. So second question. Who was your biggest disappointment uh from this weekend's uh week eleven games? Pittsburgh Steelers, because they're just a bunch of whiny bitches. And Mason Rudolph looks like a college kid whose dad is about to sue the NFL. Oh Lord. <laughs> okay. Number three. Um who which team do you think really needed the win that they got this weekend? That one, I'm going to have to go with the New England Patriots. They had to get that Baltimore Ravens taste out of their mouth. And the fact that they're playing the team that just recently beat them in the Super Bowl, I think the Patriots got their confidence back after that one. Okay. All right. So, number four, um, who was your offensive player of, of the weekend? In a loss. It would be Kyler Murray. Um, he played his heart out and walked in San Francisco defense and almost beat that team. All right. All right. So now question. Now we have a resume of 10 games for Lamar Jackson. Um, given your experience, especially since you've seen him and you know what teams that are coming up next, what do you think that your key, if any team can do it, like if any team can do what, what needs to be done, in order to beat Lamar Jackson, what do you think the keys are to stopping Lamar Jackson? The keys to stopping Lamar Jackson, the same thing I said after the Patriots game, is you need to sit back, don't rush him, see what he's going to do with the football, and then take action. Do not let him get in your head, which is what everybody does. You guys are going to – your 49ers are going to see him in two weeks. Yeah. I you, got Bay, you got Green Bay coming up, and then you got Baltimore. You know what's funny, though? I honestly think that Kyler Murray is a faster quarterback than Lamar Jackson. Yeah, you see, um, and that's, where, that's where the 49ers might have a little advantage. But the disadvantage that the Cardinals have is Kyler Murray doesn't have the swagger in the uh, – he doesn't have the confidence that Lamar is playing with right now. Lamar yeah. is playing with MVP confidence. True. So and, if he was going to beat them, you know what? And I know I made fun of him earlier. If a team's going to knock them down a pick, I think it's going to be the Cleveland Browns once again. Yeah. Because they've played him more than anybody. True. True. Okay. All right. Those are all five questions, sir. You knocked it out. Um, we got a show this Friday. This Friday is a special show. 
going to be a possibly a two hour banger. Hopefully, you got some time to bear with us because this Friday show is going to be the redo show. We're going to go all over all of our picks and predictions that we made uh, in the preseason and ask ourselves why did we do this and we should why should and yes we should be ashamed of ourselves for certain things that we. Yeah, the Bears was the big one. Um, I think me and the Browns. And and the Browns. Browns. I think even for me, the Niners, I, I predicted them way too low, but I did predict them as a playoff team. But there's a lot on this. I think I thought Atlanta was going to be better than they were. They actually was worse than I actually thought they were going to be. And it's funny because um, New England is actually playing better than we both picked them. Yep, yep. Because we thought the NFL was going to get a lot tougher, and that's not the case. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. All right, so until then, we shall see you on Friday night. This is your boy, James, a.k.a. Hollywood J. Black. That is my man's, my main man, Big MF and Sin over there. This is the Overtime Sports Show. See you Friday. We are out this bitch. Deuces.